Hey guys. Well, welcome to another video on the, uh, what will become my, uh, the new version of the, uh, my uh, C3500 HD with uh, 6BT Cummins power. So the purpose of this video is, it's actually gonna happen over the course of a couple weekends, but we are going to get this motor, um, the motor and trans refreshed. By refreshed, I mean, we're not rebuilding this thing, but she does have some leaks, she does have some blow-by, we're gonna try to mitigate that blow-by, um, or redirect that blow-by might be a better term to use, and, uh, get this thing sealed back up and painted back up and basically ready to put back in the truck. So when the time comes for that anyway. So we're gonna attack this project a little differently than I normally attack projects and we're gonna do pieces at a time and have them just painted and ready to go. And then once everything's ready to come together, we don't have to do all of that little little minor stuff. That's my game plan, so we'll see how it goes. So on that note, let's get after it. Okay, so the first thing I did off camera obviously i'm sorry is it's you can see it's the end of the day here i i had other stuff to do in the morning house cleaning and whatnot but uh there's the old pony out there um but uh it was 44 45 degrees today this afternoon and uh took it a while to get there but i said rather than trying to clean this thing up in the barn it's a warm day. We're going to bust out the power washer, get the hose filled with water, and we degreased this motor. And wow, what a difference. I mean, obviously, it needs paint, but uh, holy crap. That's an improvement, eh? So I've degreased it, scrubbed it, um, brought it back inside, took the blowgun to it. And, uh, you know, same with the trans. Got that about as good as I can get it. Um, but, you know, basically ready for paint. Um, it will do some more prep work, but, um, the motor now I'm not going to get so dingy and nasty. Uh, we did some select other parts. Uh, most of this I think is going to get reused and cleaned up and painted except for maybe that lift pump. Cause I think that's just an oil leak on the seal, but I don't know. I'm going to price that thing. I might just replace it. Um, went to Cummins yesterday, uh, ordered all of my gaskets and seals that I need that will be in next week. So hopefully next weekend, maybe we start doing a little assembly and paint on this thing. And then what I did was, I'm gonna try this stuff. I bought this, I think for the L9000. It's a kind of a funky color, but whatever. It's probably not gonna work anyway. So um, it's rated for 1300 to 2000 degrees. I don't know. It'll probably end up just being rust again, but um, we're gonna shoot some paint on. We got the manifold, um, the, uh, the rotating assembly of the turbo and the hot side of the turbo. I've needle scaled them, um, gently took um, and, and cleaned up the, the gasket faces and and uh, taped those off, got everything protected. I didn't, I'm not going to tape off the, the exhaust manifold ports. I think we're just going to, we might just clean those back up afterwards easy enough. But um, yeah, we're going to do some on that, let that dry overnight, let this stuff keep drip drying, and tomorrow I'm gonna attack that injection pump, and you're gonna see this all as one video, I think we're gonna combine next weekend too, and uh, some paint and some gaskets, and see if we can't get this stuff uh, reassembled and ready. All right guys, so I kept it a little bit warm in the, uh, in the shop last night, and uh, let this paint cure up, and it's, it's, feeling right um so we got as i pointed out we got the the um the exhaust assembly the what do you call that the turbine side i guess it would be uh we got the rotating assembly and we got our exhaust manifold all feeling good um got some other parts we cleaned up and then over here what i didn't show you is the compressor side um, this was really gnarly uneven so I actually acid dipped it let this sit in a muriatic acid um, bath for a bit scrubbed it and uh, it came out really good it's just kind of dull so I I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna try and 
clean this up. The problem is that's a slippery slope. Once you start sanding and wire wheeling, so I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's see what we decide. But um, next step in the project is we're going to get this turbo all reassembled, um, and then we got to get that damn injection pump off. Well, you saw I uh, got the turbo. The uh, that's a WH1C, by the way, because this truck is in '94 and '95. That would have switched to the HX35 on a stick truck. Um, which I don't know. You know that was on the on the Dodge trucks on the uh, on the medium duty trucks. I, you know I don't know. They might have kept the WH1C for a little longer, but regardless, they're they're virtually identical to the HX35. So that's all done. Uh, I decided to also pull off the uh, transmission bell housing because this way I don't have to mask off. I can maybe take some, some acid or something and clean up that bell housing a little better and we can do minimal masking on the transmission. Four 15 16 head bolts and it's done. So I'm on to the, um, to the timing now. This is much easier for me because I have everything apart. So if you look close down, where is it? Oh, right there. If you can see that, but there's a zero mark right there on that tooth. And if we go up here to the cam gear, again, probably hard to see in the camera, but right there, there's two zeros on those two teeth. So when we line that up, um, we're going to bar this engine around until we are at uh, um, top dead center, and then we'll be able to come back around here and should be able to take this little pin right there out. Um, I think there's probably a circlip in there or something. Um, or maybe we just got to take off those two Torx heads. But regardless, we'll be able to take that pin out. And that should insert, drop right into the a notch on that cam gear. 
and then we'll pull off this nut right here and there's a, a should probably be a plastic pin in there that's gonna allow us to drop in and keep the ip from turning and at that point we'll be able to pull our injection pump gear and uh let's see this guy's not gonna work wishful thinking so hopefully this thing There for sure. Okay, so zero's coming around, but we're we're not there, so that means we're 180 degrees out. We're pumping a little fuel out. That's okay. She's doing what she's supposed to do. Okay, zero's coming around. I don't know if you guys can see that there. There we go. We're gonna go very, we've reached our point, kinda hard to see now. Ooh, just about, we're close. There. Now, these should both be loose. 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 Now we'll check, but that pin, both those pins should drop in now. We're at top dead center, and the injection pump can come off, and we can commence some resealing. Okay, guys, well, as much as I know I'm supposed to be pulling this injection pump right now, I'm, uh, I'm getting distracted, as always, and finding things I need to do. Um, it would be kind of crazy to not lash valves right now, so... Um, because we're already at TDC, um, a little bit more barn, and we can finish around. So because we're at top dead center right now, we are able to do intake and exhaust on number one. And then we alternate, and we're able to do intake on two, exhaust on three, intake on four, and exhaust on five. Then um, we'll bar it over one full rotation so we'll be 180 degrees off from top dead center and at that point so all we'll do is we'll line that zero on the crank gear just to up to where it fully meshes here and then we'll be good to adjust the other six valves um, i'm not going to go through and show you that process um, it's pretty simple it's uh 010 on intake and 020 on exhaust and uh it's just a matter of loosening them up um you know, we'll take a paint pen and mark them off as we do them so we remember which ones we've done. But um, um, it's pretty straightforward. You know, once it's at the right position, we'll loosen it up. We'll, uh, you know, do what we need to do, loosen, tighten, whatever, to get that drag to be right. And then off we go. So I'm going to do that before we come back and pull that injection pump. Because, again, um, the, these valve covers had to come off anyway. I'm putting a dual breather kit on this to alleviate some blow by and we're doing new valve cover gaskets even though they weren't leaking uh, we're, we're doing new ones because we're in here um so this all had to come off anyway obviously it's six bolts so not like it's a big deal anyhow but um just just we're not rebuilding this motor but we're going to do everything we can within reason to make it run as good as we can on a budget and um in light of what we got going so it's a while you're in there sort of situation so there's a whole lot of while we're in here sort of things that we can do and lashing the valves is absolutely one of them so here we go so valves are lashed and i've reset to top dead center so i kind of wanted to show you i actually because i wanted to just make sure i pulled the uh the housing off for the uh for the timing pin and you can see that hole there in the cam gear if i get you in close i got oil dripping on me but uh, so all that is, is this guy right here and that little pin pushes out. So I took this out and lubed it and cleaned it up and ready to put back in. And that way we know when she pops in. And then here you can kind of see, I think, let me get my flashlight. If you look close up in there, 
see that little, looks like a screwdriver blade sticking out. And that is going to engage with that. And that tells us, you know, if your if your pump was pump timing was turned way up, that might not line up. But there we go. We've got stock pump timing, so uh, which we're going to leave it there. Um, I, I've got the pump turned up, the AFC and the and the fuel screws and all that good stuff in there. Um, I'm not going to go any more than that. I'm not going to do different valve springs. This is a tired old motor. Um, We'll feed it a little extra fuel and call it good. So, so that's done. We're going to put that plug back in and then we can pull that pump gear off and get this thing out of here finally. Okay, so we're pinned on both. Oop, that's not 9 16ths. I'll just, we'll just cheat. And, uh, I just got a cheapy steering wheel puller I've got sitting around and hopefully we won't pull threads out of this thing and it'll pull this gear off the shaft. Boy, she is just a bending. Okay. Well, it worked. There we go. That's what we get for trying to do it one handed. So, anyway, that's that. Um, we have to check seals, because that looks a little wet, doesn't it? Yeah, I wonder if a front... Well, let's see. We'll get her off here and see what we see. We got everything off. We got that tappet cover off. Everything cleaned up. Casket surfaces cleaned. Um, and you can see I got the oil pan off, too. Um, so that's over here. I got everything scraped and at least rough cleaned. Um, pulled the rear mirror out. I'm not going to tap that out until I have the new one later this week so that I know I get a, you know orientation back right. And then there's a wear sleeve there and all that. Um, it's funny to see you know, that this engine was obviously painted Cummins tan. And then once it was assembled, they painted it Ford gray for Ford because that was the customer. But anyway, um, she's going to go back to tan. But, um, so that's done. Um, yeah, I crawled underneath, looked at the, everything. Everything's looking, I mean, at least visually, looks good. Uh, here's the injection pump. That's a behemoth. We got to get that cleaned up, and I do think that it's, I got to add this to my list from Cummins, but uh, that O-ring, I think, is is leaking, so we're going to, that's all that is, is an O-ring seal to the timing cover, so we're going to replace that as well. Get this all cleaned up. Um, I am going to convert this back to a set off solenoid i had converted it to a cable i want to go back to an electronic solenoid so that's getting added to my list and uh there's the remnants of the tappet cover gasket you know i don't know why that thing was failing you can see it's uh it's 30 years old it's brittle only thing of concern in this whole process i found all that in the oil pan. I'm not sure what that is, but this engine has been running great. Um, it did have turbo failure, like catastrophic turbo failure. And uh, so I'm gonna go with that being remnants of the old turbo. Um, obviously any of that would easily have passed through the uh, turbo drain you know that's uh you know we can see if i set that set you up there even the biggest piece comes right through weekend same video for you but again it's the magic of video and youtube uh so here we are get you zoomed in here i did not record the last like literally i don't even know four or five hours worth of work because it's really boring and tedious and that is prepping an engine for paint um so lots of needle scaling and wire wheeling and sanding and disassembly and wiping and you know all over again so i don't know where i'm at i got 
Oh, I got some more stuff here. We got to get that on the. We got to get that stuff painted. So that's got to go over here. But you can see we've got parts. We got lines all laying around. We got pulleys. We got turbo drain lines and brackets and fuel filter assemblies and more lines and pulleys and fittings and valve covers and tappet covers and you know a million friggin bolts we got everything this oil pan was pretty gnarly but the old needle scaler took care of it pretty good it's nice and solid still um i have degreased and went through a lot of parts cleaner a lot good thing i buy that by the case huh um and then last step was i took uh wax and grease remover just in a spray bottle and sprayed that all over everything wiped some select areas we're letting i turn the crank the heat up it's a pretty warm day it's almost 40 degrees so i've got the heat crank turned it up i think to 67 here we're going to finish drying that off i got a couple more things to mask off and uh We'll get this in primer here, and then uh, I'll come back out in a couple hours, and we will get Cummins tan shot all over everything, and then uh, we'll do a little bit of maybe reassembly tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not sure. We might not do any reassembly. We might just let this sit and and take. Uh, my gaskets didn't come in this weekend, so we can't do everything anyway, but uh, yeah. Well, let's get after it, boys. Hey, guys. Well, as you can see, we are on the road. And you know what that usually means with me. We're on the road. We're probably going to pick something up, right? And it probably involves a truck. Well, you're right. It does. Um, I am on the line. Oh, yep, there's that sign. Exit 127. Um, so we're in Ohio, south of Finley, just north of Lima, um, and headed towards uh, oh, southwest side of, or southeast side of Dayton. And we are going to pick up a new frame for the 3500 HD. Uh, made a good deal on Marketplace. Um, a little barter action and uh, we're gonna go get this thing it was snowy and icy we got we got a couple inches of ice and snow last night at home in Michigan you can see it a little bit on my hood here it's just cold and no snow so I'll take it because it would have been a bummer if I'd have gone through about three gallons of windshield washer fluid if it was like it was in Michigan so um, I'm not gonna complain all right guys I had to bring you back dirty because it's winter and everything's dirty but nice looking short sleeper 389 there going by got the old school wing on the top of the sleeper covered wagon nice looking truck Alright guys, well, we're getting on back towards Toledo, but what we picked up, she's actually in pretty fair shape. Alright guys, well a little closer look at what we got. Um, again, this is a 98 C3500 HD frame. You can see it is in much better shape than mine. I mean, still a little bit of the original coating still on there on this back half uh, you know no rust jacking whatsoever on that double frame section uh, she clean shock mounts are clean I mean a lot of that may go away I just I just don't know yet I mean these springs honestly even though mine are pretty new these things look great so if I end up doing a spring suspension truck I think this is gonna be our back half and we'll I don't know we just don't have much room on this short wheelbase to do a frame splice but might have to do it within right here and then try to play it on the inside but it's on the compound curve so i don't know i got designs on other things i want to do but um 
she's clean. Same thing with the front axle. I mean, well, I gotta change my springs out one way or the other, so, so I might as well switch. But we got a we got basically a complete front end. Um, we got one tie rod, half the big tie rod bar is missing, but I got that. We got a plow mount. We got to get rid of. We got a junk bumper, but um, you know we got a good clean frame, good base to start with, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there, fellas. So I'm gonna set you up and uh, let's get this thing off the trailer and moving along. well keep this short i want to thank you as always for watching um man what a beautiful day it is look at the sun shining i mean it's going down so it's getting cold but yeah springs are coming um but as always thank you so much for watching you have no idea how much i appreciate it and um i know it's a little disjointed we had a lot going on on this truck but that's that's how these projects go right you gotta jump on stuff when you find it and make it work to get to the end result so um, stay tuned. We're just going to be lots more where this came from and, uh, we'll get us a, get us a truck built here in the next few months. All right. Take it easy. Have a great week.